All right, guys, Thursday, April 11th, 8.01. This is the ASIC Super Blast. It is one of your favorite daily trainers. Now, with that out of the way, I'm going to discuss some of my favorite daily trainers, like the Nike Vomero 17 here. And guess what, guys? Because I'm not doing double run days, and I got to post the Hoka Skyward X first run review early yesterday, and I was supposed to do this favorite daily trainer video, you're probably going to get two videos from me today. No double run days, but double video days. I'm also just going to rip right through this, just highlight all the key points on these shoes and save the long talking video for later. So if you're one of those people who've been complaining that the videos are too long, I expect you to watch this entire video until the end. With that out of the way, let's dive into the list of my favorite daily trainers. All right, guys, so first I wanted to discuss what makes a daily trainer and my philosophy behind these everyday running shoes. And so there is a lot of debate around should you be running in shoes like the Super Blast every day? This is not a plated shoe, but should you be running in shoes like this? Some have plates, some don't, that are super protective, that have these foams and rocker geometries that make it easy for you to run? Or should you be running in something a little bit simpler? And the Vomero isn't the simplest shoe on the planet, but it does have mid 20 stack height in the forefoot and not a whole lot of tech going on. But should you be running in more standard shoes like this every day? Now, my philosophy around this and thinking about Vomero versus Super Blast here is we should be running in every day or not every day, but we should be using the primary daily trainer that matches our goal of the training cycle. So if your goal is to get out there, run not a ton of aerobic mileage, but maybe you're running 20 miles per week, 30 miles per week, and you're running for general fitness, makes a ton of sense to run in a shoe like the Vomero every day. However, if you're running 60, 70, 80 miles per week and you're ripping off two to three quality workouts at marathon pace and faster, then it makes a little bit more sense to be running in a shoe like the Super Blast every day where you're gonna be protected, your legs are gonna be feeling fresher for those workouts, and it's gonna give you a little bit more speed assistance to pop off and run those quality workouts faster. So that's where I stand on it. Choose the daily trainer that matches where you are in the cycle. I know there's some people who think running these higher stack shoes can weaken your legs. I have not seen any research on that. If you have seen research on that, or you have a good body of anecdotal evidence that's not just N equals one, let me know, drop it in the comments below. But that's my philosophy, just make sure, the other, the last thing I'll say is, I think it's good, again, anecdotal evidence, N equals one, I'm about to negate everything I said, but I think it's good to rotate the types of primary daily trainers we have throughout the year. So if you're gonna do a Super Blast or a Skyward X in the spring, I would just maybe switch it up to something like the Vomero or Rebel, something a little bit lighter weight, different shoe in the fall. And the one piece of research we do have around gear and what can help keep us safe and prevent injury is rotating shoes with different drops can prevent injury. And that study is a tiny bit dated. And the way I look at it now, the rocker geometry and the type of foam can impact the ride a little bit more than the drop. So I would extrapolate the findings from that study to say, maybe we should rotate the types of shoes that we're using beyond just drop, but different types of foams, diff different softness, different firmness, different types of rockers, so that we're working different muscles in the body. So with all that out of the way, let's get into the top five, baby. Top five, top five, top five. I think I just won a Grammy. No more Future and Drake songs, man, that's sad. All right, guys, we got the five suspects lined up here. If you are an astute viewer with a keen eye, you might be able to tell what those last three are. But let's start off with this one here, New Balance Rebel V4. And this is not going to be in order. These are all, they all have slightly different capabilities and things I like. So top five, four different things. So this is a lightweight everyday running shoe. This one has probably the best speed capabilities. Well, tied with one of these, but this is a speedier daily trainer. You get a little bit more ground feel up in the front and a nice little rocker up here. So the downside of the Rebels is not going to be the most protective out of all these shoes out here. I did take it up to three hours, a 23 mile long run, and it did okay, but it wouldn't be my first choice for that. So I would get this shoe if you want something fast for everyday runs. This would be an awesome shoe for 
a high school cross country athlete where you're going to be running most of your runs in that aerobic range, not super long hour plus runs every day, but you're probably going to be hitting that steady zone where you're pushing the pace a little bit, trying to race your boys at the end of every single run you do. That's what the rebel is going to be best for. Also really solid shoe for walking around. I put some good walking miles in this thing and lifestyle shoe again looks great for that it reminds me a lot of the old nike what is that shoe i brought it out here the other day the i think epic react shoe so a little bit of a softer feel takes about 30 miles to break in but once it does amazingly soft bouncy foam just the right amount of pep now there's been con some concerns about the durability of the foam some people saying it loses its bounce after 100 miles i have 130 miles on this and that's not been my experience. I also got 300 miles out of one of the shoes I'm gonna highlight here that people said the same thing about. So take with that what you will, but nice comfortable shoe also has a roomy upper up here in the forefoot. So a good option for wide footed runners. So if you want something lightweight, a little bit on the faster side for shorter runs, not the best for long runs, I would go with the Rebel here. Also, last thing I'll mention, good grip on the outsole. So that's the first, second, Hoka Mach 6. You guys knew about this one because this is the one I was about to talk about yesterday until that Skyward X came or until I saw that we had the Skyward X up there. So this is probably the closest competitor to the Rebel that we just highlighted, except it's got a little bit more stack. So that Rebel was 30 and 24. This is 37 and 32. And just two years ago, 37 in the heel would have been considered max cushion. And now most brands out there are going above 40 for their highest max cushion shoe. So just yesterday with the Hoka Skyward X, that thing is at 48. We're seeing some behemoths hitting the market this year. So this is not a max cushion shoe anymore. It is more protective than the Rebel, but the secret sauce is super critical EVA foam, really nice and bouncy feel, a little bit on the softer side, but not too much stack up here in the forefoot where you don't get any ground feel so it's a little bit of ground feel but a little bit more protective than the rebel a really fun shoe it's not the most stable and i'll highlight some better options for stability but it was decent especially if you're going to be running fast so i would get this one if you want something lightweight but a little bit better for hour plus long runs and of course it's hoka so you can wear it as a lifestyle shoe and people will think you're cool or at least they'll think you have good taste in lattes rubber on this one is Okay, I initially thought it was a really good rubber because I was comparing it to the Nova Blast 4, which has a terrible rubber. But then yesterday I ran in the Skyward X when it was wet over here, and I was a little bit disappointed at the rubber on that. And I compared it to this again in that video, and they were just okay. So I would put this in the tier probably two or three of rubbers. You're not going to be slipping and sliding, but you don't get as much grip as the Puma or the Adidas. Now, Final note on this one. So fun, fast, bouncy. I or second, the penultimate note is it's really good at fast pace. I did some 520, 530 pace miles in this thing, and it was just singing. And then the last note, this actual last final note is sizing. It can be a little bit weird. I had two different pairs of these that I tried on. One of them, same size, 10.5. One of them was way too tight, and it's what gave me a weird thing on my toe. And the other one wasn't it was a little bit loose i could have sized down so i would highly suggest buying through my running warehouse link true to size and if it doesn't fit doing a free return because running warehouse has 90 day returns and then you'll be good i'm gonna be like a used car salesman i gotta push this running warehouse thing more to help support the channel come on guys all right next up here our deal shoe in all these top five lists i'm highlighting a deal shoe we got the Hoka Mach 5, baby. So this is the previous shoe, the successor to the Mach 6. It does not have a rubber outsole, so that's one of the differences. The other difference is instead of going 100p of the supercritical EVA foam, and that means 100% for those of y'all who aren't hip to the radical slang, it has half and half. So 50p supercritical EVA, 50p standard EVA. So the standard EVA on the bottom here, it reinforces the rocker profile a little bit more. So this one does have a little bit more of that strong rolling rocker feeling, but it also means that you get a little bit of a firmer ride once this top foam compresses. 
And then because you don't have an outsole, the firmer EVA on the bottom acts as the rubber outsole. They wouldn't have been able to get away with the Mach 6 not having any rubber because the supercritical EVA, as you can see, will wear pretty quickly here. And I should mention how many miles I have on all these Mach 6. I only have 60 miles. So this cut one maybe comes with half an asterisk. I don't love recommending shoes unless I have 100 miles. So that is something to note. But Mach 5 here, we have 300 miles. And then Rebel V4, we have, I think I mentioned, 130 miles. So throughout those 300 miles, this is my go-to for slightly faster running every day. But again, this shoe, not again. This is a new, new thing I'm saying about this shoe. It is very versatile. I used it for runs with the family and the stroller, doing 10 minute miles with some friends. And then also like the Mach 6, ripping off some 520 paced miles. So extremely versatile, not gonna be the best if you need something for wet weather or cross country, but a really solid shoe for that $100 that it's on sale for right now. Cause the last two shoes were 140. This is $100. If you want something fast and fun, good for workouts. I would go with the Mach 5. All right, now next two shoes, last in the top five before we get into the bonus, we have the aforementioned Nike Vomero 17. So this guy is one of the most durable shoes out here. Absolute tank. Look at this rubber coverage. I have 200 miles on it. It is also, and just after holding the Mach 5 and Mach 6 in my hands in the Rebel, it's also a little bit heavier. So now we're getting into the more protective, more built up, more maybe traditional daily trainers. The first three are lighter daily trainers, slightly faster than I would use if you're in a cycle of fitness where you're running the bulkier mileage a little bit faster, or I would rotate one of these with a Vomero or the next shoe I'm gonna highlight. So this has more protection. It's in the high 30s in the heel, high 20s in the forefoot. And the reason I'm rounding a little bit or just giving you the general range is because the rubber is really tall. And so the rubber is, part of what goes into the stack height measurement. And if you look at this guy, it looks like it almost has five millimeter lugs like a trail shoe compared to, you can see the Mach 6 here, you can barely see the rubber poking off the shoe. So that's some of the, a little bit of stack, additional stack you get here. And then also if you see the way the midsole foam is set up, you get the top layer of Zoom X, which is super compressive. It, it almost goes completely flat when you're running in it, in this shoe and in Nike's racing shoes and in the Invincible. So that means even though it's the shoe does have, I think 27 or 29 officially, in the forefoot, it rides more like a 23 or 25 in the forefoot. So like the Rebel, you get more ground feel, but unlike the Rebel and unlike some of these other shoes, you get a ton of stack in the heel. And so for some people, this isn't great. It can be a little bit awkward if you're not a heel striker, but I love the feeling of the shoe. I love how much protection I get in the heel. And it means no matter what my form is, it feels good to run in the shoe. And this would be, and I know I said I wasn't doing rankings, but this still would be my favorite daily trainer. I've run in, I think yesterday I was saying 40 plus 50 plus shoes over the past year. This is still the one I would pick if I could only get one daily trainer, one running shoe for marathon training to do the bulk of my mileage. And then of course, getting a speed workout shoe or a plated trainer to pair with it. I would get the Vomero 17, a perfect rotation for me right now would be something like Vomero 17 and Saucony Endorphin Pro 4 done. You would be set for everything that you needed. Both of those shoes are super durable. This guy, look at that, tons of rubber, 200 miles on it, and it looks pristine other than my highest wear area in the back here. So really awesome shoe. The upper is pretty built up. Again, it feels, someone described it as bomb proof, and that is a really good description of this. It almost looks, I, I use this to describe the CLX1 upper, but I think I said it about this shoe first. It's like a Carhartt sponsored upper because of how strong and structured it is. So. What you're getting out of the shoe is well built all around, a little bit of a firmer foam on the bottom, softer on the top, nice and stable. And then you do get some pep in the step from the Zoom X on top, although it's not gonna be the best option for fast running. It's really more about durability and protection. So that is the Vomero 17, my current pick for best daily trainer on the market. $160, but you can find it for 110, 120 if you do not use my running warehouse link and you use the nike.com deal link, which is on Subwell. So go to subwell.io, go to the deals page on Subwell. You can also go to subwell.io slash deals and that deal will be linked 
for the Vomero. All right, guys, last one here, and I probably put this as the thumbnail. I don't know. So you probably know about it already. It's the Nova Blast 4. It's a hot ticket. It comes from Asics. It's the little brother to the Super Blast, all those things. So this is an awesome shoe, $140, $60 less expensive than the Super Blast. And for me, it did a lot of what the Super Blast offered. And so if you are a runner who's going to maintain a rotation of shoes, so you want to get the Rebel V4 and another shoe, the Nova Blast is an awesome shoe and is a better buy than the Super Blast. The Super Blast is going to be a good buy for some people if you want something that can do faster work and recovery runs and daily mileage. This for me was perfect for those relaxed runs and had a little bit extra pep when I wanted to push it down to that steady range. But the key benefit of this shoe, the one thing that it's better at than any of the other shoes we've highlighted so far is, drum roll please, long run capability. Now, anytime I brought this shoe out, once I came to that 30 minute mark, hour long mark, I was extremely happy that I was in the shoe because it offers a ton of protection. If you look at the stack here, it's the highest stack shoe of any of these daily trainers, 42 millimeters in the heel, I believe 35, yeah, mid thirties in the forefoot. So tons of protection and they have something called the trampoline pad up in the forefoot, which again, gives you a little bit of that pop. So rubber here, not the best grip. This is actually the worst grip. This is the shoe that I was referencing earlier, a little shade sub subliminals coming at the Nova Blast 4. It is. It felt like ice skating when I was wearing this in the rain. It felt like running on melted earth balance. So this is not the shoe I would pick if you need something for wet weather grip, although they do have a trail version of this, the TR. However, this is the shoe I would pick if you want something for chewing up high mileage. If you're in a cycle of training where you're doing a little bit more relaxed mileage, you're not running down to that steady zone, marathon pace zone for a lot of your weekly mileage. Maybe you're doing that super low end zone two or just regular zone two where it's two minutes, a minute slower than your marathon pace. This is the shoe I would pick for that. It's also a great option, best one out here for bigger runners who want more support. It's got a nice wide heel out here. It's very stable. So also the best option out here for stability. This is also the best neutral running shoe that I've tested this year for stability. And then last thing, super comfortable, nice padding around the upper here. So all around shoe that's going to give you a lot of protection, cushion support. It's not the softest. That's the actual last thing I'll say. Not the softest here. A little bit of a firmer, more structured feeling. And that's what makes it better for bigger runners who don't like something super pillowy. And then I know you guys like when I highlight shoes for bigger runners, the second pick I would have is Bomero 17. This is great for everybody, but for bigger runners who like a little bit of that softer feel, that's a Vomero 17 because you get that softer top layer of ZoomX. All right, guys. So two more shoes, two bonus shoes for you. First one here, Puma Deviate Nitro 2. And as I was saying in the beginning, I base my daily trainer choice around where I am in training. And so I have nothing against running in a plated shoe every day until validated, verified, lab tested data comes out that says it's bad to run in a plated shoe every day for three months and then not run in a plated shoe for three months. I have no problem with it. So this is the Puma Deviate Nitro 2. It's got carbon composite plate, really good outsole rubber here. This is the best wet weather shoe on the market. It's got a little bit of a firmer foam in the heel, softer foam in the top layer. And this is the top pick if you want a plated training shoe for a little bit more of that speed assistance feeling, but also something that works well for everyday miles. I would go for the Puma Deviate Nitro 2. I have about 60 miles on this guy. Also, Nova Blast 4, that's past 100 miles, I should have mentioned. But this guy, 60 miles, super comfortable. The foam on the underneath the forefoot is really soft for relaxed running. And then when you pick up the pace, it responds really nicely. Wouldn't be my top pick for a speed workout shoe, but if you want one shoe to do everyday miles and speed training, if you are that track athlete or cross country athlete and you have three workouts, maybe even four workouts a week, but you want something that can also do more relaxed runs, that would be the Deviate Nitro 2. Downside is if you got a wide foot, uh-uh, no way. Not you, buddy. This is not going to fit you. It is extremely narrow. It uses that European soccer boot feel. So unless you're Messi or Pele or Ronaldo, this is not going to work for you. If you got a big old American foot, 
unfortunately, you got to try one of the other options on this list. I would go for the Vomero over this. And funny enough, they actually do have pretty similar rides when running for everyday mileage. When picking up the pace, the DV8 Nitro 2 is a little bit better. But Vomero feels really similar to this with the softer top layer and then a little bit of that firmer bottom layer. So that's bonus pick number one. Bonus pick number two. Oh, and I should also mention, sorry, one more thing. This is going to be extremely durable. Our guy Curiosity has got 500 miles out of this. If you search Deviate Nitro 2 500 mile review, you could see his thoughts on this after 500 miles. So very durable, great value. And this is going to be another deal shoe soon because Deviate Nitro 3 is coming out in beep. I don't want to ruin my relationship with Puma, but it's coming out very soon. All right. Last shoe, bonus pick. Don't have a ton of miles on it so far. It is a hybrid speed training and everyday running shoe. It is the on Cloud Monster Hyper. And this shoe demonstrates that hybrid mentality better than any of the other shoes because you can see it right in its construction. If I cover this up, it looks like a daily trainer. It looks like the on Cloud Monster. Then if I take it away, you can see the big slab of racing foam up in the forefoot, which is going to give it that speed capability. So I've used this for, I think I've done a 90 minute run in it. And then I did just a regular six to eight mile run. And then I did a workout around with six miles of threshold. And so I've enjoyed this for all of those runs. I, this threshold workout was on the treadmill and wasn't my favorite for treadmill running, but I love how the top layer of foam here in the forefoot works with this bottom layer. And so the green foam here is a firmer EVA, more standard training foam. That's what's going to give it some stability. It also gives it a nice compression, almost similar to that ZoomX feeling where you get super low on the foam. And this isn't as soft as the ZoomX whatsoever, but it's got these air pods or I forget what the cloud tech pods. And so it's empty. And so that presses down. You can see where these creases are. That's they're starting to form because I've used it for a decent number of miles. And so you get that compression, which makes it a little bit better for relaxed running than some other shoes that are speed oriented. And then the forefoot here, that Piba makes it a really nice peppy feeling. So this is on the more expensive side, $220. But I think we're going to get some good durability out of it. I've had I've had good luck with the on shoes for durability. We got a good amount of rubber here. It's not as comfortable as other shoes in the category, like the Skyward X yesterday. And it's not an uncomfortable shoe, but I'm saying it's not super soft and squishy. So if you're expecting super soft and squishy, don't get this. Get one of get the Rebel or Vomero even are softer than this. But it does have that nice pep and bounce. It's gonna be a really good option for speed training and for faster runners, and for someone who wants just one shoe to do everything. You could even use this if you're running a two hour half marathon or 150 half marathon. You could use this as a half marathon training shoe and then race in it. So upper, really comfortable. Unlike the Puma DV8 Nitro 2, this has a wider toe box, and I'm glad they're a Swiss brand, but they did accommodate our American feet, so that's cool. And then you got some cool stuff going on with the laces up here. So expensive shoe, but it's going to be worth it if you can put a lot of miles on it and use it for most of your weekly training. So those are my favorite daily trainers right now. We got the Core 5 right here. Let's just show you again. Rebel, Mach 6, Mach 5, Vomero, Nova Blast. And then Super Blast is back there because that is your favorite. We had to show it in the video, I think. I think that's contractually obligated at this point. And then bonus shoe, bonus pick, DV8 Nitro 2 if you want something plated. And little asterisk, bonus pick, Cloud Monster Hyper, still testing, need to get this up to 100. So there you have it. If you watch to the end and you're normally a person who complains about my video length, comment pineapple below. All right. I will be back later today with another video.